Hi everybody, uh, sorry I couldn't make it to class today. I am not feeling very well. I tested positive for COVID, which kind of sucks. Um, what are you gonna do? So the plan, even if I'm feeling better, I don't think I'm gonna come in on Thursday either. I just don't wanna expose anybody else. But by next Tuesday, I should be all good and I will plan on seeing you then. So I'll have class again on Tuesday the 15th, but for this week, for the 8th and the 10th, uh, I will send you videos. I mean, I guess you've seen it if you are watching this video, but I'll send you another one in the next day or two for our class on Thursday. So this week what we have going on in Math 142 is this 8.1 homework assignment, which is due, I don't know, tonight or Tuesday night, depending on when you watch this. And then there's also the 8.2 homework, which I will review in a different video. And that'll be due on Thursday. And as always, you got a quiz and your quiz covers 8.1 and 8.2. Quiz is due Friday, solutions are due Saturday. I know you know all that stuff. I don't even know why I repeat it every week. Anyways, 8.1 and 8.2, they're fairly, um, they're very useful sections. And I don't know, typically I think students like them. You learn these things called the laws of sines and cosines, which are really just formulas that end up being super useful. So in 8.1, we learn this thing called the law of sines. And all it does is it gives a relationship between the lengths of sides of a triangle and the angles in a triangle. And you're like, oh, kind of like Sokotoa, huh? No, because the law of sines doesn't just work on right triangles. Remember Sokotoa, that only works if you have a right triangle. The law of sines and the law of cosines, as we'll see in 8.2, works on any triangle. So it's much more powerful. And what it says is that in a triangle where the angle measures are capital A, B, and C, and the side lengths are little a, b, and c, and little a is across from capital A, little b is across from capital B, and little c is across from capital C. The sine of angle A divided by the length of side length A is the exact same as the sine of angle B divided by the length of side B, which is also the exact same as the sine of angle C divided by the length of side C. And that's a super useful relationship. It'll allow us to answer a bunch of questions, some of which we could have already answered, in fact, towards the end of this homework, you might see some things that look familiar. I believe you've been asked some of these questions. Maybe they're extra credit when you were asked them. Uh, but now we can do these in a much easier way, so they will no longer be extra credit. This is not a formula I'll ever provide you with, so it's definitely one you have to have memorized. And I do that because, well, I think it's pretty easy to memorize, right? Really, the challenge is not memorizing the formula, it's understanding how to use it. And there's kind of two different ways that you can use it. You can either use the formula to solve for a side length, or you can use the formula to solve for an angle measure. And it's the same formula, so you might think that the difficulty level is about the same, but it turns out it's not. When you're solving for an angle measure, it's a lot harder, and there's a reason why. It's this thing called the ambiguous case. Because I'm sick, my dogs didn't get the exercise they need, so they're probably gonna be barking all throughout this video. And hopefully you know about the ambiguous case from watching the videos. It's also worth pointing out that in either of these two cases, whether you're solving for a side length or you're solving for an angle measure, there will be at least one, if not more, angle measures provided for you. And those provided angle measures can either be memorized values off your unit circle or not. And it'll turn out that these problems, whether they're this easier type or this harder type, are even harder if those angle measures are not the memorized values off your unit circle. One last piece of information I wanna throw at you in kind of the review portion of this video refers to how we came up with this law of signs, where this thing comes from. And I showed you that in the videos, and it's not like a proofs class, you don't need to recreate that argument. But a product of that argument was one more formula that frankly, you're not gonna have to use a whole lot, but it shows up, I think, exactly once in the homework. Actually, it's on question one. So this seems like a good time to tell it to you. When you think about the area of a triangle, you probably think the area is half the base times the height. And that's true, but sometimes we don't know the height of a triangle. When you're in that case, it's okay. We can still figure out the area if we have two side lengths and the angle that's in between those two side lengths, much like you see in this picture here. If we again use capital A, B, and C and little a, B, and C in the way I described earlier, then the area of a triangle is one half A, B, sine C. Note that I have two side lengths here and one angle, and that one angle is in between those two side lengths, right? Because if I'm calling this C right here, then the unknown side, C, is over on this side, which means these guys must be A and B respectively. So for this first problem, which I guess I'm essentially just gonna do for you, the area of the triangle is just one half AB sine C, A is 38, B is 30, and then the <coughs> sine of 45, there's my dog again. You might be able to just leave as the sine of 45, I'm not sure, or you could rewrite it as root two over two. I think you can get away with this as an expression, the system I believe marks it correct, 
But if you wanted, you could multiply 38, 30, and one half, and you would get what, 50, 570, I think? 570 root two maybe is what this is equal to, but you don't need to do all that. You can just type this in and call that good. I kind of started going over the homework inadvertently. I was sort of still in the review portion. Before I go any further in the homework, I want to make another comment. This problem that you do here for the area is good if you can do it. It's good that you know that this formula exists, but don't expect to get tested on that. The heart of this section is kind of more what I showed over here, where we're going to use the law of sines either to solve for a side length or solve for an angle measure. And in fact, on your quiz, that's exactly what I'm going to ask you to do. What you'll see is the law of sines works really well in word problems, which we'll get to at the end of this homework. But on the quiz, it's not word problems. On the quiz, it's a triangle just like this, and I give you some combination of capital and lowercase letters, A's, B's, and C's, and ask for some other ones. And while you don't know this yet, in 8.2, you'll learn this thing called the law of cosines, which is a different formula, which works in instances where the law of sines doesn't work. It also involves little a's, little b's, little c's, capital a's, capital b's, and capital c's. And I'm going to test that on the quiz in the exact same way. On this week's quiz, there's going to be four problems. And in each of the four, I give you some combination of those letters. And I ask you for some other letter. One little challenge, although I don't think it'll be too bad, is I won't tell you whether you should use the law of sines or the law of cosines on a given problem. I throw four problems at you and say use either the law of sines or the law of cosines to solve these problems. For what it's worth, you will be solving for side lengths on the quiz, and you will also be solving for angles, which generally is a little bit harder. However, I will only use the memorized values on your unit circle for your quiz, because as you'll see when we go through the homework, this adds an extra level of complexity to these problems, which I don't really want to add. Anyways, at this point, you're probably not too worried about the quiz. I should be focusing more on the homework. So let me get back into this homework. We have this law of signs, and what we're going to do is use this a bunch of times to answer questions. And they start out about as straightforward as you can make them. We have this triangle. Note that it's not a right triangle. However, the angles of this triangle are all memorized values on your unit circle. And we're supposed to find a side length. Okay, so solving for a side length is the easier case. We don't have to worry about this weird ambiguous case. And because we have angle measures off our unit circle, it's fairly straightforward. What you do is you name the angles. It doesn't matter which one you call A, B, or C. Maybe I'll call this guy A here. But if I call this A, then this has to be A. And if I call this B, then this has to be B. Using the law of sines, I know that the sine of A divided by A is the same as the sine of B divided by B. I don't need to include the sine of C over C part because I'm not using angle C nor side C. And then what we do is just plug in all the different values that I'm given in the problem and solve for what's left. So capital A is 60. I get the sine of 60 degrees divided by little a which is my variable x, and that's supposed to be equal to the sine of b, sine of 45 degrees, divided by little b, which is 17. Because sine of 60 and sine of 45 are memorized values off your unit circle, you could change those into their values right now. But I usually don't. I think it's easier to solve for the x first, because if you change these into their values right now, you'll end up with fractions inside fractions, and maybe we can avoid some of that by doing the algebra on the front end. So if I multiply the x up to the top of this side and multiply the 17 up to the top of this side, I got 17 times the sine of 60 is equal to x times the sine of 45 degrees. Now I can divide both sides by the sine of 45 degrees, and I get x is equal to 17 times the sine of 60 degrees divided by the sine of 45 degrees. When you're in this case that the angles are memorized values off your unit circle, I'd like you to simplify these. I'd like you to say that the sine of 60 degrees is root 3 over 2, and the sine of 45 degrees is root 2 over 2. So what I have is 17 root 3 over 2 divided by root 2 over 2, which is the same as 17 root 3 over 2 times 2 over the square root of 2. Canceling out these 2s, I get 17 square root of 3 divided by square root of 2. A couple comments here. You could argue that maybe you should rationalize the denominator. You're not wrong. It's not a bad idea to rationalize the denominator. You could make this 17 root 6 over 2 if we felt like it. Although I don't really care that you do that at this point. I have to kind of pick my battles. Another comment that I want to make. Often the homework system will let you get away with writing your answer in at this step. On the quiz, I'd like you to show me that you know these memorized values off your unit circle and that you can get, take it this far. But on the homework, often you can get away with this form. But be really careful. When you use trig functions on the homework system, it always assumes radians. 
So if you were going to try to type in this, you'd have to type it in as 17 times the sine of 60 pi over 180 divided by the sine of 45 pi over 180 to convert those angles from degrees into radians. Anyways, that's the second problem. I've seen two homework problems. I've done both of them from start to finish. Maybe I should stop doing that. Uh, the third problem, mm, I don't, maybe I'll have to do this one also. I don't know. So in this second problem, what we had to do was solve for a side length. In this third problem, what you'll see is we're going to have to solve for angle measures. So it's a little bit harder. Furthermore, there's a little trick with this one where one of the angle measures is obtuse. And I'll talk about what that tells us in just a sec. So let's do it. If you look at what's given to you, you have two different A's here. And then you have one of the B's. If you're going to use the law of sines, it would be the capital B that you'd be figuring out. So I would say the sine of capital A over A is the same as the sine of capital B over B. So the sine of 45 degrees divided by what? 6 root 6 is equal to the sine of B divided by 18. I'm going to end up solving for capital B. So I'll isolate the sine of B by multiplying the 18 over to the other side of the equation. I got that the sine of capital B is equal to 18 times the sine of 45 degrees divided by 6 times the square root of 6. As I mentioned above, when you have memorized values off your unit circle, I want you to simplify those answers. I want you to plug in what those values are equal to. Why? For instances like this. So the sine of 45 degrees is root 2 over 2, right? So I get the sine of B is equal to 18 times the square root of 2 over 2 divided by 6 times the square root of 6. A lot of simplification is going to happen. This 18 and this 2 can cancel, so I get 9 root 2 up on the top. And on the bottom, 6 root 6, I can rewrite that as 6 times the square root of 2 times the square root of 3. Because the square root of 6 is the square root of 2 times the square root of 3. Note that the square roots of 2 cancel out, and this 9 and this 6 can be reduced. So I get that the sine of B is equal to 3 divided by 2 times the square root of 3. And you're like, yeah, okay, that doesn't really help me. Right, but look what happens when I rationalize the denominator. Here's a little plug for rationalizing the denominator. If you multiply the top and the bottom by the square root of 3, you get 3 root 3 on the top, and you get 2 times 3, or 6 on the bottom. This 3 and this 6 cancel, and you get root 3 over 2. Ah, the sine of b equals root 3 over 2. That seems like a memorized value off my unit circle. Yes, but be careful. When you see sine of b equals root 3 over 2, you're probably thinking this angle right here, 60 degrees. But there's another angle on your unit circle, namely 120 degrees, where the sine of that angle is also equal to root 3 over 2. So which is it? Is it 60 or is it 120? Well, it has to be 120 because this triangle has one obtuse angle. And if we use up 60 degrees here and we've already used up 45 degrees here, then we only have 75 degrees left for angle C and the triangle won't have an obtuse angle. So our obtuse angle must be angle B. Obtuse means more than 90 degrees, so angle B must be 120 degrees. Note that they want this answer in degrees, so you don't have to convert this from radians to degrees. They want it in degrees, you type in 120. We figured out B, but we're not done with the problem. Fortunately, the rest of it will go a little bit easier. To figure out C, all you need to know is that the sum of the angles in a triangle are always equal to 180. So we're using up 120 of them here and 45 more here. So think about how many that leaves you with down here. And then once you solve C, maybe you can set up an equation using the law of sines again, except this time maybe you can include C's in here instead of just A's and B's. And you can solve for a side length C in much the same way that we did up here. Hopefully by going through these first few problems in a lot of detail, I'll be able to skip several of the next few. Let's see, question four. I think question four will be doable. It should follow the steps of question three pretty closely, except you're not just figuring out the obtuse angle. You're saying there's two different angles it could be. Here's the one that's not obtuse. Here's the one that is obtuse. And then solving the triangle in either case. They take you through the steps, so we're not just figuring out capital B. We're figuring out the sine of B first, and then the two angles, and then you solve the triangles for angle C and side length C under each of the two cases up here. I think four is just redoing stuff we've already done. Five is a little bit different. Five is meant to be a lot like question two. In fact, the way you solve it will be almost identical to question two. The only difference between five and two is now these are not memorized values off of our unit circle. But it's fine. We could set it up the exact same way, right? The sine of 33 degrees divided by x is equal to the sine of 18 degrees divided by 11. Solve for x by multiplying this over here and multiplying this over here and dividing this over here. 
and I get that x is equal to 11 times the sine of 33 degrees divided by the sine of 18 degrees. You're like, right, but I don't know the sine of 33 degrees. That's okay. When it's not memorized values off your unit circle, you don't have to simplify. It's kind of like we're in this step right here, except we don't have to go any further. Our answer is what you see in green right here. There is no simplification we can do because these are not memorized values off your unit circle. However, much like this answer in green, remember that if you're going to type it in this way, you have to convert from degrees to radians because this homework system always assumes that the angles you put into trig functions are given in radians. So you couldn't type in your answer this way. You'd want to type it in as 11 times the sine of 33 pi divided by 180 divided by the sine of 18 pi divided by 180. Question six is a, another one where we're dealing with non-memorized values off your unit circle. And it's sort of a two-step process. Note that we're only given one angle here, 39 degrees. So the first thing we need to figure out is what capital A is equal to. They are asking you to give capital A in degrees in this problem, which will make it a little bit tricky. So there's going to be lots of little tricks with this problem. This is probably a good one for me to do. Using the law of sines, I could say that the sine of capital A divided by little a, which would have to be 19, the angle across from a, is equal to the sine of 39 degrees divided by the side length opposite 39 degrees. So 15 here. You can multiply the 19 to the top of this side and get that the sine of a is equal to 19 times the sine of 39 degrees divided by 15. But here's where things get a little bit difficult. Previously, when you solve problems like this, where you were solving for an angle measure, this was a memorized angle off your unit circle so that you could simplify this, and it simplified really nicely so that this was a memorized value off your unit circle. In this problem, that's not the case. So you're like, how am I ever going to figure out what this angle is if this one is not even a memorized value off my unit circle? And the answer is, you're not going to. You're instead going to use inverse trig functions. You're going to say, all right, the sine of A equals this mess, therefore, a is equal to, and it's kind of not equal to, so I should put like a question mark in there. A, wouldn't that just be equal to the arc sine of 19 times the sine of 39 degrees divided by 15? Be like, you're close. In fact, you're really close, but there's a problem. Arc sine always gives you an angle between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2. Think about angle A right here. Angle A is not between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2. It's not between negative 90 degrees and positive 90 degrees. Angle A is over here in the second quadrant. It's an obtuse angle, right? I can kind of draw it for you here. Here's angle A. Maybe that's a better picture. So this can't possibly be the right answer because the right answer is an angle in the second quadrant and arc sine never gives answers in the second quadrant. So what is arc sine going to give us? Well, arc sine is going to give us the answer that's between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2 so that the sine of that answer is the same as the sine of angle A. The sine is the y coordinate. Arc sine is going to give us this value right here. So they're very close. They're related to each other, right? We know how to refer to this, ang this blue angle right here. We want to refer to this green angle. If we know the blue angle, how do we talk about the green angle? Well, what we can do is go 180 degrees and then back up by the blue amount. So A, the angle that we're looking for, is actually 180 minus the arc sine of 19 sine of 39 degrees over 15. And you're like, ooh, I don't really follow that, but I guess I can at least change my numbers to your numbers and get this correct. Maybe. It would be really good if you could follow this because the next few problems are also going to deal with non-memorized values off your unit circle, if I remember right. But there's even more to it than that. We can't go typing this into the homework system right here. Because we're using trig functions, we have to make sure that our angles are given the right units. So for the sake of the homework, we can't just write 19 sine of 39 degrees. We have to write 19 times the sine of 39 pi over 180 and divide that by 15 and then take the arc sine of that. And there's still even more problems. In this specific one, we want the answer to be in degrees. When we use arc sine, it gives us an angle but the angle that it gives us is in radians. Sine takes in radians, arc sine gives out radians. We don't want it to give out radians, we want to give out degrees, so we have to convert that into degrees. So we take these angles that were in degrees and convert them into radians so that we can use sine, and then we take the output for that and run it through the arc sine function, which gives us an angle, but that angle is given in radians, and we need it in this problem to be in degrees. 
So we have to multiply that by 180 over pi. That's really confusing. The answer that you'll want for the homework will be all this mess in red. And I can't imagine anybody would get that correct if I didn't do it in front of you or for you. One more comment. This is just this box. We still need to figure out this box. It's up to you how you do that. One option is after you put this in, I think the homework system will give you a decimal approximation. And then you can just use that decimal approximation as you try to solve for x. The point that I'm trying to make is you'll need to know the answer for a to figure out x. And so you could leave it exact like I have written here, or you could like put this into a calculator or use this homework system to figure out what decimal this is. That might be easier for you when you're using a to figure out x. The way you use a to figure out x is to use the law of sines, we need two opposite pairs, right? So maybe this 39 degrees and 15 can be one pair, and the other pair has to contain this x. So it's gonna be this side length and this angle. And you're like, wait, but I don't know this angle right here. Yeah, you kind of do though, because the sum of the angles in a triangle have to be 180 degrees. So once we figure out capital A, since we know 39 degrees, we can figure out capital B. So still a little bit of work left to be done about down here, but hopefully you can take it from there. Question seven is the last of these types of questions with the A's, the B's, and the C's. Fortunately, if you've gotten this far, I think you'll be okay on this one. I think if I remember right, that six has a lot of the tricks in it and seven isn't quite as bad. For seven, the angle that they give you is already obtuse. So what that means is that B and C must both be acute. These are both less than 90 degrees because the sum of all three angles in a triangle is 180. And if we're using up more than 90 here, then we have less than 90 for these two combined. So each of these individually have to be less than 90. And that's kind of nice because that doesn't give us this weird case where we have to use arc sine and think about which of the angles we want and do 180 minus all that trick that doesn't come into play here because we're using acute angles our answers if we're following this would just be the blue angle not the green angle for question seven so start with the law of signs with a's and b's that should be able to give you an expression for this answer right here be careful make sure that you give that angle in degrees so you take the arc sine that your answer might contain and you multiply it by 180 over pi. But if you have signs inside those parentheses, make sure you convert those into radians. Once you figure out your answer for B, remember that the sum of all three angles in a triangle is 180. So maybe that can allow you to figure out capital C. And once you figure out capital C, you can figure out little c using the law of signs. At this point, you're probably pretty over the homework. You're like, wow, this is getting crazy hard. And now we're starting the word problems. Good news, the word problems are significantly easier than the non-word problems. I think the hardest part of this homework are questions six and seven. Maybe they should even be extra credit, I don't know. Try your best on these and I'll take a look and see how everyone did. And if people struggle with them, I'll just make them extra credit, it's not a big deal. Really, the nice part about the law of signs section is it allows us to redo problems that we've already done in a much easier way. So maybe you remember this problem, I even wrote that. Remember this problem, 5.4, maybe you don't, I don't know. Um, they give us all this information. We have this angle, this angle, this distance. I guess this is an airplane or something. And we're supposed to figure out the distance the plane is from point A. So really, in the language of our triangles, maybe we make this little b, and we make this capital B. And then we're given this, I don't know, maybe we can make this little a. If we only knew capital A, we'd be done with this problem. We do know capital A, right? These three angles right here make a half circle. So they have to add up to 180. So from this 30 and this 52, we can figure out capital A. And once we know capital A, we can use the law of signs with this pair and this pair to figure out little b, and that will be our answer right here. The bad news is A is not gonna be a memorized value off your unit circle, but I think that that's okay. I think that if you've gotten through these kind of harder problems, you won't find it too challenging to get your distance here. Just remember that if your answer contains like the sine of some angle, convert that angle into radians. Question nine is another word problem. In fact, it's another word problem you've already seen. It's a satellite. We're given these two angles and we know that they're 61 kilometers apart. So this is a 61 right here. Maybe we would call this little c and we can call this capital C and we can call this capital B. And what we're trying to figure out is how far the satellite is from station A. So from here to here, I guess in the language of this problem, that would be a little b. Be a little bit careful. You're like, oh yeah, yeah. and capital A is 86.1, right? Nah, capital A is this side. It's what's called the supplement to this angle. It's 180 degrees minus 86.1. We have kind of a half circle here 
We're using up 86.1 on this side. So what we have left on this side is what, 93.9, if I'm doing that math right. Now we know capital A and capital B, two angles in a triangle, so we can figure out capital C. And once we know capital C, we have the two pair that we need, capital C and little c, capital B and little b, to figure out the answer to the question, the distance to station A, aka little b. I don't think I have anything to add, maybe for the rest of these problems, let's see. For 10, really all you have to do is read through here and they give you a bunch of angle measures, put these into the picture and then figure out what they're asking you to figure out. I think one of these two problems you can use SOHCAHTOA and one of these two problems might make more sense using the law of sines. The other comment that I wanna make is instead of calling the angles capital A, capital B, and capital C, they call them alpha, beta, and gamma. They're trying to get some Greek letters in here. But so that our law of science formula holds, you might just want to change this one into capital A, capital B, and capital C, respectively. Three more problems, but I don't think you're going to need much help on any of these three. Uh, on this one, there's some gondola ride, right? Who cares? What we know is some angle, this is given to us, some other angle over here that's not given to us, but we have enough information to figure out what it's equal to. So we have two angles in this blue triangle, which means really we have all three angles in the triangle. This side length is given to us, it's 650 feet. So if we want to figure out this side length, we could just use the law of science to figure it out. And then after you've done that, if for some reason you want to figure out this, maybe you could take advantage of the fact that we got a right triangle in here and you know the angle and a side length. So you can figure out another side length using Soka Toa. So this has two parts, the law of signs at the start and then Soka Toa at the end which I think is the same thing that ends up happening on this problem, if I remember right. My voice is starting to give out. Two more problems. This problem, I don't know, it's a little bit tricky. Maybe it's kind of fun, maybe it's not. I guess it depends on you. There's lots of different ways that you can solve for D right here. I think the most straightforward way is to solve for, maybe I can take advantage of some color. This distance in red first, using the law of signs, right? Because we have this angle, 22 degrees, this distance, 250 feet. And then because we know this 47 degrees, we can figure out this angle. And then once we have this angle and this angle, we can figure out this angle. So we got all the angles and 250 feet, we can figure out this length in red. Get that length in red, then put that on hold and figure out this length in blue. To figure out this length in blue, maybe now you're using this triangle, which again, you have all the information you need about. This is 37 degrees. I still have this angle right here, which means I can figure out this angle right here and then this length in blue. Then the distance that we're looking for is just blue minus red. That's one way to solve this problem, although I think there's several others that would work perfectly fine. All right, final problem on the homework. It's the guy wire problem. I had never heard of a guy wire until I took a trig class where I saw this exact same problem. For whatever reason, this problem is asked in every single trig class. Um, I don't really even like this specific version of it because they draw this tower kind of two-dimensionally, so it's hard to see the different angles in here. I think it helps to change this to one line that is pointing straight up. So that's another assumption in this problem, that this is pointing straight up in the air as like a tower should point. As you probably guessed, you're gonna use the law of science to figure stuff out here. If you read through the problem, you'll figure out that what you're supposed to figure out is this side length here, and the triangle that'll end up being relevant is this one that's pictured in blue. And you're like, oh cool, I already know a side length for this triangle. You want me to figure out a side length if I just knew the angles, I'd be done. Yep, that's exactly right. And one of those angles is given to you. Definitely not drawn to scale. They claim that this is nine degrees right here. Okay, cool. I still need to know one more angle measure. Well, it turns out that you know this angle measure over here. And the way you know this angle measure is based off of this angle measure, the inclination of the hill. It might help you to continue this line straight down so we continue our tower and see this right triangle right here. Right, if this is built straight up in the air, then it would form a right angle right here. And based on the fact that this angle is 69 degrees and this is a right triangle, maybe you can figure out this angle and then this angle. I don't know. Do it however you want to figure it out. Get this angle right here and you should be able to use the law of signs to get your answer that goes right here and finish this homework assignment. I don't have much voice left, so I better stop this video right here. Hope that helps everybody. I'll make you another video later this week and I'll see you next week.